and welcome to a special edition of the 905er podcast. My name is Joel McLeod. I'm Roland Tanner. And we were doing this as a special follow-up to our episode on the 1 million march that happened last Wednesday uh, at a number of school boards across Ontario as well as across Canada. Um, as I had mentioned in my in my report from that day, uh, near the end of the of the protest, when there were the protesters were packing up and leaving, I saw a group of teenagers uh, down the road outside of the school that they were protesting in front of, and I thought I would go down and I'd talk to to these teenagers. And the group of them ident- identified themselves to me as being trans and, and, and or in somewhere on the on the spectrum, and. We engaged in a, just in a, in a pleasant dialogue, and I thought it was an eye-opening uh, conversation based uh, that that wasn't there in this national debate that we're having. And so, one of the one of the kids that were there struck me as a very thoughtful, very very interesting young person that I wanted to get their opinion on what was going on because in this debate, in this discussion that we're having nationally, we're not hearing enough of from trans teens that all this these policies are supposed to be affecting. So without further ado, and without me bungling this up too much as I already have, I'd like to welcome to the podcast, Jaden Hill, uh, for coming on and, and talking with us today. Thank you very much, Jaden, for uh, for coming on. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me here. Um, Jaden, I'd like for our, our guests, uh, or our listeners, I should say, to get to know you a bit better. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, and... Uh, and and what brings you here today? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm a grade 12 student here in Halton. I am a theater kid. I play music. I used to be on sports teams. I'm a straight A student and I'm also trans. And that's not the main part of my identity, but that's the part that's really been coming to focus right now rather than all the other parts of who I am. And I, I'm sure that you that you have a, ver- a variety of different interests that we could go into, but unfortunately, this is what's taking up the political dialogue in our in our country at this moment. Um, now, when I talked with all the protesters, uh, their their belief was that there was a a movement within not just Halton but across every school board in Ontario that teachers, staff were there to pressure students to question their sexual identity and to question their their gender identity and 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 to pressure you into changing who you are. And I just want to put it to you. Have you ever been pressured by student by by uh, staff, by by teachers, by administration, by anyone of authority in your school to change your gender identity? Absolutely not. That's nowhere near what's happening. Teachers aren't trying to force you to be anything. They just want you to be able to be like your authentic self. So if being yourself means being able to use a name or pronouns that you aren't safe or able to use at home or at work, they're going to do that. But nobody's forcing you to do anything. They just want you to be yourself and be as true to who you are as you can be. Yes. I mean, why, why do you think this issue has arisen, Jaden? I mean, why, why do you think there are, there are people out there who, who seem to think something that's happening in schools that according to the teachers and according to the students such as yourself is simply not happening well I think that it's happening because there are more people more students who are feeling free and comfortable to come out as trans and be their authentic selves and because there's more people who are now in a society where they're able to feel comfortable coming out that means people think that there's more people that people have never been like this before. And so it must have been the culture that's caused it. But it's the same thing. People thought that all of a sudden there were a ton of left-handed people. That's just because they stopped shunning people for being left-handed. And that's the same thing this is, where we've been able to progress as a society to a point where people are more comfortable and safer coming out as trans. Mm -hmm. So because the youth of today feel comfortable doing that, people are going to think that something's being done to us to make us do that but we're our own free thinkers and we've just gotten a platform to say that that's a really good example actually the the left-handed thing you know i think of my you know my parents generation were still of the age where 
you know, if you didn't write with your right hand, you 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 were, you know, you were kind of forced to be right-handed, whether you wanted to be right-handed or not. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, was it? And um, now we would think that was fairly barbaric kind of behavior. Uh, mm -hmm. And like you say, there's the kind of, there's that false logic, isn't there, that goes on where it's like, well, I've never used to have all these left-handed people. Where did they all come from? It's like, well, you used to hit them <laughs> over the back of the hands of the, you know. Uh, so, I mean, Tell us a little bit about, I mean, as adults, we all left school so long ago that we've forgotten what it's like. And um, uh, I, I both what it would like to be in school and what it's like to be someone in that age group of, of the kind of changes that, that that you're going through, the kind of intense moment in life that is being a teenager. Um, do you feel that you know, broadly you are in a sort of supportive environment um, and when, you know, supportive being very different from an environment that's putting pressure on you to do any particular thing. Uh, do you feel that schools are, are handling uh, sort of changes in our society, the, 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 the greater prominence that, that uh, trans people have now, um, uh, are they handling it correctly? Are they handling it well? I think the schools definitely are. All the staff, the admins, they're all great. And they just, like I said, want people to be able to be their authentic selves. So they're coming around, they're trying to find ways to show like more diverse people. So not just, you know, the nuclear family is being able to show all these different type of people how they are. And as much as the school is so supportive, people think it's the teachers forcing things, teachers forcing their beliefs, but it's the students that have more issues with who I am than anyone else. Like the teachers keep their own opinions to themselves because like, this is their job, right? They're here to work, then they go home, then they socialize and have their own lives. But the students, cause this is their main life, that's where the issues come from. That's where the non-support comes from and people trying to decide things about you. The I mean, that's the, the, this all started from the, the outside of the province, really, with, with New Brunswick and Saskatchewan saying that they were going to notify parents if a student wished to change their pronouns uh, at school. And here in Ontario, the current government's flirting with it, but they haven't really said if they're going to make that a policy or not. I, I, I want to know what, what, what's the importance of being able to choose your pronouns. And, and, and to to you uh, right now in this stage of your life. Yeah, so I found that being able to change my pronouns let me be myself. Like when I hear people use pronouns to refer to me that aren't my pronouns, like it doesn't click in my brain that they're talking about me mm -hmm. because that's not who I am. That's not how I associate myself with other people. So being able to use the right pronouns is like the simplest thing. When somebody sees a dog on the street and they're like, oh, he's so cute. And then somebody's like, oh, it's actually a she. Mm -hmm. People apologize profusely, but they seem to care more about the pronouns of the dog they find on the street than the pronouns of the people. That, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, now, I mean, the, 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 this might get getting a bit touchy. I do want to preface this with to our listeners that your parents did consent to having you on the podcast. And I know that your mom's just out of sh camera range uh, at the moment, but I mean, the, the protesters were, were so adamant that this is, be, you know, this all being done in like a secret cabal to hide this from them as parents. I take it that your parents are very supportive of you and that I, clearly they love you because they they were in contact with me before allowing you to come on to the podcast and i could i just briefly i got the sense that they very much care about you and that they want you safe and and sound um i guess my my, my point is your journey however it's going to unfold it, what 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 level do you think that outside the government whether that's the the schools school system or 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 the government should be allowed to interfere with that and that your whatever your journey as you as you go forward that's between you your parents 
maybe your healthcare professional, but really that's it. And it's your personal journey. And I, 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 what, what's your take on the idea that this, that the government should say, no, we're going to interfere with this and we're going to direct this for you until you're legally emancipated. I think that's a really bad idea. I think everybody deserves bodily autonomy, no matter what the reason is, but especially when it comes to this issue. And, you know, I'm 16. I'm almost going to be 17. I have to plot my entire life. I'm starting applications for universities and colleges in the next couple of weeks, but I have to decide my entire future. But then that's where they draw the line. 16th, the year of medical consent, where I can decide if a procedure is right to me. Why should this be any different than these other issues? And I know people who have been stopped from doing this because they're young and they're struggling a lot. They haven't been able to be their authentic self. So their mental health, their physical health are severely draining and struggling. And, you know, it's not just like, I want this, that'd be fun. Like people will get medically diagnosed with having gender dysphoria to which the treatment is to undergo, as it's called gender therapy, but it's to help somebody become their, like it's gender realignment so that they're able to connect with the gender that they actually are. And these are important things that people need to be able to have. It's a medical condition. Like if that's what the treatment is, you should be following the treatment. You shouldn't let someone else's bias get in the way. The government shouldn't be able to say, oh, well, I don't want you to do that. It's like, if I'm on a diet and you're eating a donut, I'm not going to prohibit you from eating a donut because I'm on a diet and that goes against my diet. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. And that's not how it should work with any of these situations. Obviously you're in a situation where, where your family is very supportive of you and, and that's awesome. And that's the ideal situation for every, uh, everybody in, uh, you know, every teenager, every, everybody at school. However, that's not the ideal world that we live in. So, I mean, what, what do you think, um, I guess, what would you say to the people who were protesting the other day um, who, I mean, as Joel yeah. mentioned in our, uh, the episode we ran today, you know, you've got people like you standing on one side who have actual experience of the story, who are living with it um, and actually attend, you know, the schools. And on the other side were people who, made no effort to sort of reach out to you to speak to you to say is you know are these opinions that we hold accurate now maybe that's a naive hope that people might do that nevertheless you know let, let, let's pretend that we can speak to them and say uh, what would you say to them to kind of say you don't need to worry about you know your your concerns are misplaced uh, well, what is happening is not something you need to fear well, what I would say is I'm just a regular person, okay? I'm an ordinary person. I work a part-time job. I go to my high school for six hours every day. I'm a normal person. Just because I'm trans doesn't make me any different from any normal person. And people should be able to know about my existence. We're not teaching people, here's how you become trans, go and do it. We're teaching people that trans people exist and that you don't have to block yourself off from that possibility if it is the right possibility for you. But that doesn't mean you have to follow that. It's just that it's a thing that's out there. Go for it if you want, like do your thing. But um, it's, <laughs> people um, need to just, we're not trying to do anything. We're not trying to force your kids to do something. Realistically, you're the ones causing issues for us. I struggle a lot because of what these people, these, you know, they say that they're not transphobes, but they're saying that we're like poisoning their children, essentially. And, you know, I wouldn't want somebody else to become trans knowing that these people are out there, that these people make me feel unsafe. And I don't know why you think I would try to convince someone else to be in the same position of feeling unsafe of feeling nervous going mm -hmm. outside why I wouldn't try to stop that from happening to them. Well, the one thing I never understood, I didn't quite get as I was talking with the protesters was what was the point of the conspiracy? I, I, I don't, I didn't understand what the point of a teacher, if you think about it, every teacher in every school board in the province of every school 
in some kind of mass conspiracy to a lot to encourage students to force to change their gender or sexual identity i said okay let's if it was going on what was the point like i, I just i didn't understand the the point of it um that's a more of an editorial comment than a, a than a statement <laughs> but um yeah and I, I, I mean what 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 was your take on the fact that yeah i mean at the protest you were you and your friends your call your your peers were about i'm going to say 50 feet away from the main group of the protest at no point did any of them walk over to you to say you know we're doing this for you and for your friends or 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 just to say as roland said are we doing or do we got this right at no point did they try to have any kind of dialogue with you. What what do you what do you take away from that? I think it's that it almost it's the same sort of thing where people talk about you know cyberbullying, hiding behind a screen. It keeps the anonymity almost. It's the putting on the face of oh we're doing this for the kids, not those kids. We don't care about those kids, but our kids. They're the ones that matter. They're the ones that need mm -hmm. to know these things, and without being able to put, you know, a face on the people that you're blaming, a face on the victims, it's easier to align yourself with views against them because, mm -hmm. you know, don't really exist, not really real people to worry about. So them not coming over just kind of shows that, you know, they don't care enough about the individuals impacted by this issue. It's more a, this is what we want. Um, go away just let us do our thing it's, you know? it's easy it's easier to be against trans people than it is to be against Jaden hill <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's it's an age-old problem isn't it i mean it it's um it, it you know hatred prospers in in silos you know when people don't talk to each other and uh it, it's such a shame and it's such a waste of uh such a waste of energy ultimately um <laughs> Uh, and it's a shame that that the people such as yourself, Jaden, uh, have to still have to fight these battles and find yourself, you know, when you should, like you say, you should be thinking about, um, you know, the schoolwork you need to do to get to to the university you want to go to, and all these other things, and enjoying your youth, which is you know really important. Uh, and instead of that, you're finding yourself on the on the front line of a culture war that you never asked to be involved in. Um, I guess I mean I mean how, you know when you go to school and you see a protest like this happening I mean I mean how does that it's, a, it's a kind of a dumb question but it's kind of a question which is unavoidable how does that make you feel do you, do you feel do you feel threatened still or do you feel given the support you've had from 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 friends at school uh, and the apparent support there is certainly from many parents from many boards from many politicians uh do you feel that there is a a good sort of ground swell of of people who are ultimately on your side it's like a, yes and no when i heard about this i started this organizing of our own student protest and i found we were able to get like at our peak 65 or 70 students from uh and then Robinson, Hayden, a couple other schools in our school board were able to come over and support us we had teachers here to support us but still, when there's hundreds of people on the other side, no matter how many people are on your side, these are the people that you're afraid of. And nobody wants to stereotype people, but they're the people that you're more afraid they're going to do something to you. So when some random person ended up being a classmate, but somebody dropped a bag in front of our group, I automatically went to the thought of this is wrong. I need to go and find the police to deal with this unmarked bag that got left in front of us. I shouldn't have to be worrying about that on my lunch break. I should have been in a space where I felt safe enough to just go, oh, somebody dropped their bag. Hopefully they find it. I shouldn't need to be having my guard up all the time. And it's great that we're able to have so many students. We were able to get the whole group of parents involved. You know, my mom was there joining a counter protest on our side to protest in support of us. And no matter how many of us there are, it's still terrifying because we're not the ones who in the end have all the power. And mm -hmm. 
we aren't the ones who find it as easy to stand up and make these people stop what they're doing, which makes it, you know, a little bit of a scary world to live in when you don't know if these people are going to come over and harass you. If you don't know if you're going to get, right. you know, attacked or assaulted just because you're trying to stand up for your own mm -hmm. rights. Well, I think it's important. I think it's important to make a note here that the protesters speaking with them there were a number that it, it's not a difference of a political idea it's not a it's, you're not they're not debating taxes or 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 whether to build something or not um the and, and the, i don't think this is fair to put this on your shoulders but they they wanted you and other trans students to go away and that's that's a dangerous i think that it's a very dangerous political position to have um and I'll be and we'll say it now the the People's Party of Canada their their candidates and their their supporters were there and that's what they were advocating um to 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 have you and your classmates and and whatnot go away whatever that whatever that may look like and I think that's a very dark and dangerous path to to say that's political dialogue in Canada mm -hmm. um I uh, I think we're coming up this is a, this is a very short special edition so i don't want to take up too much more of your time Jaden. i know you probably have homework to get to so i don't i don't want to get get in the way of that um but i will leave you with the the final the the final word if you uh if you wish yeah all right i guess it's just my message to the other queer and trans people experiencing this but also something that i think is important for the people on the other side to hear and it's that no matter what you say, no matter what you think, we exist. We as trans people have been here forever and we will be here forever. You can't take us away just because we don't fit what you think your ideas of what a person should be. I'm just a regular person. And this one small, small part of my identity shouldn't change how you think about me, how you treat me. I am not a threat. I'm just another teenager trying to survive in this crazy messed up world and no matter what you do no matter what these people say we will persist we will get through it and I don't just mean us the youth I don't just mean us the trans people but I mean anybody who's been marginalized it's that we will make it through what is happening to us we will get through whatever they try to do to us they can try to erase us from existence but we'll take up the pen and we'll write our own history they can try to burn us down they can try to take away the lives we've made for us but no matter what they do we will rise through the ashes and we'll be able to stand our ground as the people that we are as a community that we all just strive for love and humanity and our rights shouldn't be in question just because we're different from you. We are people, we are not going away, and we just want to be able to live our authentic lives just like you. All right. Thank you very much, Jaden Hill, for joining us today on the 905-er. Couldn't have put it better myself. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back next week with more episodes. Take care. Mm -hmm.